We have a really fun video today. I have 3D printed a ton of these airless basketballs that have just been the absolute rage across the internet. Everything from TikTok to Instagram to here on YouTube. We are 3D printing these and testing them out in different materials. So if you want to print one for yourself, you'll know which material you potentially want to try and print it in, depending on if you want it to bounce or just sit on the shelf. And obviously we want it to bounce. Now there are official airless basketballs that were released by Wilson that are actually 3D printed with some ridiculously expensive 3D printers and it's going to run you over $2,000 for one of those basketballs and they are engineered to bounce just like a basketball to weigh the same weight as an actual basketball. These on the other hand we've got a little bit of flexibility here pun intended when it comes to some of these and the materials that we're going to be working with whether they're hard or soft if it's PLA or TPU or pet G we're going to be testing out a whole bunch of them and seeing which ones are the best and depending on the material and how big or small you'd like to print these in it could range anywhere from 12 hours to up to three plus days for these to print and what's really cool about these is the wide variety of files and designs that are available for you to download and 3d print but they all share the same characteristic of being completely hollow and a lot of them have this hexagon pattern which are very similar to the airless basketball by wilson and i've ended up 3d printing three different different designs in these combinations here. So it's sort of intermixed. There isn't one that I sort of prefer over the other just as of yet, but 3DX AV has two amazing file options. One that's sort of your traditional basketball, and then the other that has a little bit of protrusion on the outer edges of the basketball. The other designer, Party Lime, has created a version of the ball that I think is most closely matching the Wilson's design, where there's an internal internal lattice type structure on the inside sort of semi supporting the outer shell. And as you probably noticed, I printed these in two different sizes. One as large as I could fit on one of the Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon 3D printers. This is coming in at 242 millimeters in size. And then the smaller is specifically designed for me to be able to replace some of the smaller basketballs that I have here in the studio that I use with my little basketball hoop set. And these are 177 millimeters. And the big problem with these that came with the basketball set is that they're constantly running out of air and I'm sick and tired of having to pump them up and these are just the perfect replacement. Before we get started with the testing, I did want to mention that you'll more than likely need to run a few tests to dial in your settings or potentially dry out if you're using a flexible material like TPU before printing with it. This is a like three year old Ziltec TPU filament that I even ran through the humidifier, I think for about 12 hours and it just did not print properly at all, but it's nice and squishy, but just immediately split in half. Feed me Seymour. And enough of all the yapping, let's get to bounce. And we're in the front of the studio that has cement floors, which would be perfect to test out bouncing these on. And first up are these pet G prints. Three, two, one. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I thought Pet G was gonna hold up a little bit better than that right there. <laughs> and we can test it with a smaller Pet G ball. Hopefully this one holds up a bit better. Three, two, one. Oh man. <laughs> okay, confirmed. Pet G is not the material that you wanna be printing these in. Not off to a great start, but I have high hopes here. And obviously we need to test this out in PLA. Unfortunately, I didn't print a big one. I didn't think about that. Unfortunately, I missed it. But I have this rainbow silk PLA and I have a black rapid PLA plus that we're gonna test out. <laughs> this is actually pretty therapeutic. That just absolutely exploded. I mean, I expected it to, but that was just impressive. Next up, the black PLA plus. Three, two, one. It didn't shatter, but it might as well have. It basically just split directly in half. I'm just gonna toss it again. Three, two, one. That's more like it. There's just something so satisfying with these exploding. I'm gonna have just a huge mess to clean up though. Now, I had a bit of a crazy idea before recording this video, which was, what if I take one of the PLA printed balls and I dip it 
directly in 3D Gloop and let that cure and see how well it handles the bounce test here. <laughs> so this is what we're gonna be testing out next is the 3D Glooped PLA. This is the PLA Plus again, but it's just covered in Gloop. All right, three, two, one. I was not expecting that to work. I don't know how well this is gonna hold up, but I'm honestly super impressed with how this bounced and it didn't crack. I didn't hear any cracking. I'm not seeing any cracks or anything like that. And it's bouncing pretty high. Now, obviously the downside to this here, the glooped ball, is that it's just horrendous looking. It's even when I tried to use the air cannon thing, the air can to blow out some of the gloop in some of the pockets, it cures so fast that I still wasn't able to get it all. And yeah, it's, it's quite the messy process, but the results are pretty dang impressive. That's, that's super promising to see, and I'm excited now to test the others. And fingers crossed, some of them bounce better than this one. And the next one that we're gonna test is the Overture Super PLA Plus, which is the one that I saw blowing up, I think on Instagram or TikTok or something like that, and ended up ordering some of this off of Amazon, and it prints just like regular PLA, but it should be a lot more durable and hopefully bounce here. I'm not quite sure, I've not bounced this big one yet, so we'll see. I'm a little nervous here. Oh! Oh! <laughs> that is, oh, there we go. It was doing really good for a few bounces and I was extremely impressed until it just cracked right there. You know what we gotta do. Clearly, we're not gonna be playing any basketball with <laughs> this one here. I'm wondering if it's just the, the size and weight of it is just too much for it to handle. Also, this is one that has the internal lattice type structure versus just one solid piece. So I'm wondering if that contributed to this as well. I'm not entirely sure, but it, it definitely bounced really well until it didn't. Also, any of you creative folks watching, any idea what I could potentially use some of these broken balls for maybe like an art display or something in here but let me know because i don't want to throw them out and i've got a smaller one printed that we're obviously going to test out all right here's the smaller super pla plus this one oh my gosh if it helped if i could dribble this one this might be it right here i think this is probably the best i'm not sure how long this is going to hold up i mean i feel like this might break but so far, ooh, that dribbles so well. So far, this is a really great option as long as you're not maxing it up in size. And next up is the Ataraxia Flexible PLA. This isn't TPU and it's kind of PLA, but it's sort of flexible. So sort of a hodgepodge between the two. And what's great about it is that you can just use your PLA settings on your 3D printer. I'm pretty confident these next handful are gonna bounce just fine because they're pretty squishy. Yeah, that <laughs> this one definitely does not bounce as well as some of those other harder filament based prints that we tested like the Super PLA, but it's got a decent bounce to it. And I have a feeling this thing is really gonna hold up over time <laughs> to a lot of abuse. Now I have to be honest, I've already bounced this one a whole lot. This was the very first attempt at a 3D printed build basketball that I attempted with this filament here. And I ended up bringing it to a group of middle school and high school kids that I was talking to about 3D printing and social media. And this was a huge hit. They absolutely loved playing with this. If you have kids, highly recommend it. Then we also have the smaller version of this. I think this one actually bounces a little bit better than the other. And maybe it's just because it's a little bit more solid because of the size. I'm wondering if printing this at like a 50% infill or with more walls might do it a better justice when it comes to bouncing. But you can really abuse the heck out of these. This one's the first official really soft TPU that I'm gonna be testing out here. And this is an 85A TPU, which means it's 
pretty soft compared to some of the others that are out there, like 95A that we'll be testing in a minute. But this is from Soraya Tech that typically makes resin. They have a guide to printing with this on the Bamboo Lab X1 3D printers, which also might be applicable to other 3D printers that you might be working with, which basically has you draping the filament instead of through the PTFE tube over the back of the machine directly into the direct drive extruder. Let's see how this bounces. <laughs> This doesn't, this doesn't really bounce at all. Now this might not bounce much at all, but it honestly is still one of my favorite balls that I printed. It just turned out so clean with how it printed with the TPU settings on the Bamboo Lab P1S. And the last one that we're gonna be testing out is a 95A TPU from Duramix. It's just some random 3D printing filament company that I found off of Amazon. I think it was like 20 bucks a roll. So I figured let's try it out and see how it goes. All right, the 95A TPU. <laughs> This, this really isn't gonna bounce much at all. <laughs> Super fun to print with and to handle and love how kind of firm but squishy it is, but just needs a little bit more bounce. And let's test the smaller version of it. <laughs> I'm wait I keep waiting for it to bounce up high and it's just not bouncing high. And unfortunately for the big balls, they just mostly broke or they, bounce not very well. So let me know in the comments if you have any other material suggestions that I should test out. But the Overture Super PLA really worked well for this smaller sized ball. And I'll definitely be printing some more of these to play around with and test out. And maybe I'll try a different file variation and see how that goes. Or maybe if you have a comment or suggestion down below of how I should further test this, let me know and maybe I'll post it up as a short. But for now, I have the perfect set of smaller basketballs that aren't gonna run out of air anytime soon soon that are gonna work great with my setup. Honestly, I can't believe I made that basket. I'm horrible at this. Also, I want to say a big special thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making goofy videos like this one here. If you're interested in things like my 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. And if you're done with this video, make sure you check out the 3D Printing Nerds video on the airless basketball. Hey, Joel, you're up next. <laughs> Nice throw, thanks. And again, if you have any tips or suggestions on materials that I should be printing with for these or just different setting options, please let me know because I'm eager to print more of these. Hey, thanks again for watching you all. I'll see you next time. Bye now. Airball.